So although we've almost forgotten it, in the early 1980s, a lot of our largest banks were on the brink of collapse because they had lent too much money to Latin America and Latin America couldn't pay it back. So Paul Volcker and then Alan Greenspan set out to actually make the banks safer by requiring the hold more equity capital. And that meant that if they lost money because of a bad loan decision, the money would not cause them to default on uh, their debts or be unable to repay depositors. It would come out of the shareholders' capital and the bank would survive. And so over this period, right up until the crisis, you actually see bank equity capital rising. But this had an unintended consequence. <coughs> when banks are forced to hold more equity, they have to share the profits among shareholder, more shareholders, so they're less profitable. And that meant lending opportunities migrated away from banks to others, which we, what we call now, now call shadow banks. Companies like Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, off-balance sheet uh, uh, investment funds, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. So as a consequence, you see here, this is a share of total lending by banks. And so as they became safer, they became less important. And by the, uh, by the time of the financial crisis, you had all this lending and leverage that was built up outside the banks where we really weren't aware of it or aware how big and potentially dangerous it was. A similar phenomenon um, can be observed in natural disasters. It <coughs> seems that for the last decade, we've had one after another record-breaking uh, disaster, uh, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, um, the, uh, uh, the Tohoku earthquake in Japan, just this year, Hurricane uh, Joaquin. Um, this tells you that we're seeing uh, ever more billion-dollar disasters. And if I were to actually put the total price of these disasters up there, you'd see, see large spikes as we entered the 2000s. Now, there are, uh, there's a lot of concern that this is a consequence of global warming, especially in terms of flooding and, uh, and hurricanes. And there is scientific consensus that um, a warming climate can contribute to severe weather events. But that is not the primary reason why the cost of disasters is going up. The main reason disasters are becoming more costly is because we're putting more wealth on the coasts right where they're most vulnerable to Mother Nature. In fact, we do, they're vulnerable to disaster for the same reason that they're prosperous places to have cities. When you're close to water, that helps your transportation links. This has been true for hundreds of years. It's why cities like New York, Amsterdam, Jakarta, London, and Tokyo are so close to the water because it's good for, um, for uh, transport links. It turns out people just like to live next to water. It's, it's really temperate and pleasant. Um, the uh, floodplain is where the soil was richest, so that was good for agriculture. This poster or this chart shows you the buildup of uh, the value of structures in the 100-year uh, floodplain of uh, New York City. As you can see, by merely based on economic development, it was guaranteed that a storm hitting now was going to be more costly than the last big storm, which in the case of New York was in 1938. It was called the uh, New Great New England Hurricane. This is a very interesting picture, and um, so let me walk you through it a little bit. A lot of lower Manhattan is built on landfill. In fact, that is true of a lot of coastal cities, is that because these became such valuable places to work, a lot of land was rec reclaimed from the sea to expand the possibility of putting people in such productive places. So if you look at the uh, little red line here, it's a little bit faint, but that's the original outline of lower Manhattan. Everything else is landfill since 1609. Now look at the blue area. That's actually the areas that were flooded by Superstorm Sanity in 2012. And you can see how closely mm -hmm. they match each other. And all that mm -hmm. tells you is that New York City was basically, um, uh, it was inevitable that New York City was going to be flooded this way because it's in some sense been like courting disaster from the moment it was founded. And so uh, one of the lessons of this is that because New York City keeps getting wealthier and more prosperous, it's almost uh, inevitable that uh, another hurricane is going to come along and be potentially even more damaging than Sandy. Because remember, New York is placed in, uh, in a unique location where once or twice uh, every 50 years, a very large hurricane that may not necessarily be very intense but is very wide can hit that city in such a way that it does immense damage. <coughs> 